am Ben Repond. Welcome to my YouTube broadcast. Today is uh, December 6, 2023. Uh, I'm going to begin with a piece. I played it yesterday on uh, Mohammed El Arian. He is insight going forward, kind of looking into 2024. And the thing that I thought that was most interesting about his comment was that and a lot of people skip over and don't think about corporate bond maturities are coming up next year, or excuse me, in 2025. The market will start to anticipate this in 2024. So those are uh, bond prices based on uh, lower yields, lower interest rates, and now they're going to be probably paying higher yields and higher interest rates. And what that's going to do is put a headwind on the equity market and a headwind on the bond market as well. But so I thought I would play that because um, very insightful as to uh, what's probably coming in the market. So take a listen to Mohammed El Arian. Joining us right now for more on the markets, we want to bring in Mohammed El Arian. He is chief economic advisor at Allianz and president of Queens College at Cambridge University. Mohammed, what do you think of that scenario that uh, that Sri laid out? It wouldn't be my base case. It would be my risk scenario. Um, you know, we still haven't adjusted to higher rates. He pointed out commercial real estate. I would also point out a wall of maturity of corporate maturities coming in 2025 that are gonna start playing out in 2024 because companies will be keen to refinance. It is a risk, but it is not a base case that this will happen in the next three months. I think he also overlaid with that just the geopol geopolitical risks around the globe right now. I think that's part of what has him thinking that this is, is something that could we, we could wake up any morning and have a bigger surprise. Yeah, I think what makes people uncomfortable, Becky, is that consensus forecast coming into 2023 was quite negative. Lots of people were predicting a recession and no one saw the geopolitical developments that we've had. So had they seen the geopolitical developments, that would have been more negative. In reality, we've done really well. They would have been well. more wrong, right. Yeah, they would have been more wrong. In reality, we've done really well. And I think that upside surprise has led people to be overly optimistic about next year. I'm not saying the baseline is going to be the massive financial accident he's talking about, but I do think that consensus forecast right now is too optimistic about the global economy. Next, I want to get into the dashboards. Um, <clears throat> this, the, the month of November and the last week were extremely positive, extremely, extremely positive for equities and for bonds. So in my dashboard, I cover the four major U.S. equity indexes, the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ 100, and Russell 2000 small cap index. So, and, I, and then two foreign indexes, the um, developed markets and the underdeveloped markets. And then finally, the last item on here is the um, uh, long-term treasury bond. It's not an equity, but I put it on here because it's a major, what I see is a major index. When you look at the yellow box, you can see the yields or the uh, growth in each of these indexes for the past week. They all went up. Everything is green. What went up the most was bonds. Now bonds, I'm going to show you this later, bonds have been very oversold. So they are quite depressed. So the bounce in the last three weeks in bonds has been uh, maybe not surprising because of the uh, prices. But as interest rates have also come down, it's pulled down the yield on uh, treasuries as well. Then I take those same seven indexes, six equities and one bond, uh, and show you in the pink box the year-to-date numbers. And you can see the extremely uh, high yield or high performance on the uh, NASDAQ 100, and then uh, on it goes on down the S&P 500, developed markets, and so forth. Uh, all positive for the year. And treasuries are still negative 6.6% uh, for the year. When you look at the where are they relative to their moving averages, you can see on the right, uh, going left to right, the 20-day, 50, 100, and 200-day moving averages. 
and on each one of them, everything is above its moving average except for one red dot on the treasuries. Even the treasuries got three red dots. That just shows you how much it has moved up in the past three weeks. Okay, let's go on to the next one. This will show you the, this is as of last Friday, will show you the uh, positions and returns for all of the sectors, the 11 sectors inside of the S&P 500. There are 11 sectors and all 11 are listed here. To the far right, you can see that how they are relative to their moving averages. Uh, there are five that are below moving, five positions below moving averages. And that uh, there are 44 potential, 39 are above their moving averages and five below. Uh, that compares to 37 the previous week. So the market in general and these uh, sectors all moving uh, in an upward direction. When you look at the yellow box in the center, uh, this shows for the past week, all 11 sectors were positive. Uh, some slightly, some much more so. Uh, the ones that were the strongest by far were retail and real estate. The pink box shows the year-to-date numbers of these sectors, year-to-date numbers, uh, all positive except the last four, which are negative. So the negative ones are telecommunications, energy, healthcare, and consumer staples. Um, <laughs> energy, healthcare, and consumer staples were the top three last year. They have now the bottom three. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, and uh, of course, technology, consumer discretionary, those are by far the most positive. Okay, this is a chart of the S&P 500. It's an 18 month weekly chart. One move equals one week. You can see in the, the, to the far right of the chart, you see how far it has gone up uh, from its bottom uh, at the end of November or end of October. So for the month of November, it is extremely positive. And that is what has resulted in uh, what I just showed you, uh, the sectors and indexes being so positive. So from October of last year through November of this year, about 13 months, the general direction is up. And the short term direction, according to this uh, chart for the last month, has also been up. When we look at the S&P 500, we have growth stocks in there. We have value stocks. Growth stocks are mostly focused on revenue. Growth stocks are mostly focused on profit. And you can see the direction in the past month or so, actually it's almost two months, you can see the direction is down. What that means is that the value stocks are starting to come into favor and came into favor actually during the last week of, of uh, November. So that resulted in us getting out of growth and going into value type uh, stocks. Uh, but that's very interesting. So it's, uh, it's kind of a typically when, when value stocks come into favor, that is more of a bearish sign, at least in the short run. So, um, the large cap <clears throat> index, the S&P 500 represented by SPY, the ETF, uh, relative to the small cap index, IWM, the Russell 2000 small cap index, when it's, this goes up, it favors large cap, uh, SPY, S&P 500. When it goes down, it favors small cap or small companies. And you can see for the past few weeks, the, uh, it, the direction has been down, which means that small cap or small companies have grown in value more quickly than uh, large cap or large companies. The long-term government bond have been talking about this, so you can see for the past several weeks, 
where the, the long-term government of Mon went way down, and then for the past several weeks, I think this represents about five or six weeks, uh, it has been going up, and up very rapidly. So uh, if the direction is that um, I'm reading about, the direction is lower interest rates and lower bond yields, uh, that is going to push this, continue to push this upward. And uh, that would be good for those who are in bonds. It'll be good for 60-40 um, traditional portfolios because they have been hurting a lot. But this would be good news for them. The dollar continues to decline in the short run, long run over this past 30-month period. It's up, but in the past uh, several weeks, the dollar has been uh, declining relative to other currencies. Gold has been on a tear. It's been uh, moving up quickly, and you can see this to the far right of the chart, how quickly it's gone up in the past uh, month or so. Same with silver. Not unlike treasuries. I mean, equities, treasuries, <laughs> precious metals, and then I'll show you Bitcoin after this, uh, all moving up very quickly. Uh, silver has gone up even more rapidly than gold. Relative to each other, this is a rel relative strength chart. So when it goes up, it favors silver. When it goes down, it favors gold, relative to each other. So to the far right of the chart, the move up, <coughs> excuse me, is the degree to which silver has gone up faster than gold. Bitcoin, uh, same thing. Uh, the last couple of months, it's been on a tear, running up very quickly. We have a Bitcoin model. Uh, it's been doing very well, very pleased with it year to date, as well as uh, this current period. Uh, we are not in the market all the time. We're out of the market actually quite a bit of the time uh, when it is uh, declining. But uh, there were numerous opportunities to take advantage of uh, upside potential this year, and uh, we've done that. Um, the volatility index uh, did not continue to go down. It, as of Friday, was at 1263, <coughs> and uh, but it has been in quite a bit of decline just for the last month and a half, going down from about 22 all the way down to 12. So a big decline in volatility, which again, no surprise, as equities go up, volatility index tends to come down. Asbury Research does uh, their uh, uh, Asbury 6 uh, metrics, and they measure the market in six different perspectives. And uh, all, this is the third week in a row that all six have been positive. Again, mirroring what I've just been talking about. Okay, let's look at the cross-asset relative performance, also by Asbury Research. Uh, stocks relative to each other, stocks outperforming bonds the last week, the last month, the last quarter. Those are the three columns. And high beta, uh, higher risk assets are better than low volatility or low risk assets. Uh, small cap, we saw that in the uh, relative strength chart on small cap. Small cap outperforming large cap in the last week, month, and quarter. Blue chips, the Dow outperforming the S&P 500 the last week, the last month, the last quarter. Uh, developed markets outperforming the U.S., those same three time periods. But in emerging markets, the U.S. is outperforming uh, emerging markets. Corporate bonds outperforming government bonds in the lower box. And um, Corporate bonds outperforming high yield, same three periods, or junk bonds, and the long-term bonds outperforming short-term bonds. So in a period when bonds are increasing in value, long-term is usually going to rise more quickly, and conversely, when they're falling at the, during periods like that, short-term will typically outperform. The U.S. versus the world, so this is an interesting chart giving you a mix of countries. Again, these three same time periods, weekly, monthly, quarterly. What is in favor? 
uh, over the U.S., what is outperforming the U.S. in those three time periods, Chile, Brazil, Canada, Mexico, Germany, New Zealand, and Australia. What countries does the U.S. outperform in those same time periods? Um, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Singapore, China, and Thailand. And the others are mixed. So they, they sh if you followed this for a while, you know these shift positions over time. Precious metals. Uh, gold <laughs> is gone up quite a bit, as you saw in the chart. It's now up to 2075 an ounce. Uh, that's as of last Friday. That's a spot price. And that means it's without the markup. And silver is 2555. That's up quite a bit. Uh, an increase on silver of 4.9% and on gold 2.8%. The gold silver ratio is still at 81 to 1. A um, box of silver bullion, which is uh, just um, generic silver, um, almost pure silver, is um, a monster box of 500 ounces is $13,900. Um, this was down in the 11,000 range uh, not too long ago. But at its high earlier in the year, was up uh, a little bit over 14,000. So it is approaching that high uh, at this point. The markup is $2.25. Now this is from my son, Preston, who is in that business, and this is his markup. So it gives you a gauge if you wanna buy it locally uh, from a local retailer, it gives you a gauge as to uh, what at least he is uh, selling it for. Um, the cost per round, when you put the markup, the two twenty-five on top of the spot price, is twenty-seven dollars and eighty cents in a monster box, and when you buy it in a tube of twenty, it's twenty-eight thirty per ounce. Our, our motto: When the going gets tough, the tough change interest rates. Seems reasonable. Thank you for watching. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below.